Fratelloni's Hardware and Garden Stores brings you Garage Logic Podcast number 970. Oof. So what? We're 30 away from the magic mark? Well, technically yep. 29, no. right? Because tomorrow will be 29. Uh, this is November 29th, 2022. 62 degrees on this day in 1998. And 25 below on this day in 1875. And also on this day in 1991, and I don't recall this, mm. on the heels of the Halloween blizzard, we had more than 12 and a half inches of snow on Ooh. this day. Mm. And oh. snowing right now, I don't think we'll get to 12.6 inches. Office above the boathouse on the east shore of oh, Spoon Lake. Like. It's oh, were you not watch. done yet? I With was Chris done. Chris Reavers, Manning Technology Corner. You looked at Kenny it. Olson from the Krabby Coffee Shop. John Hyde in the newsroom. And of course, the rookie. Here is your flashlight king, fireworks commissioner, and the keeper of common sense, your mayor, Joe Sushir. Okay, who invented the first walk-behind snowblower? Henry Ford. Toro. Toro. Toro did. You're right. 70 years ago. Wow. Yeah, that would hmm. be 19... I think... 52? I think, 52, Joe, they also yep. invented the first riding lawnmower, if I remember right. Um, and the first snowblower was called the Hound. I believe our title sponsor has one in one of his stores. An original? I think so. Do you want me to find out? No. Oh. The snow hound was revolutionary. It allowed you to throw snow to the left or right. Over the decades, the company created other innovations like the snow pup in 1964. And in 1986, that recently was the first snowblower with curved rotor design? That can't be right. That recently? Well, think of the okay early '80s though. Stuff was I had a yard man Not in the fancy. '70s that had. You mean the pickup rotor things? It just says because uh, reporting isn't what it used to be. Uh, it just says that uh, it was the released the first snowblower with a curved rotor design. I don't know what that means. Curved rotor design. I well, do thanks. know that I sound good. <laughs> well, wow. wait. Yeah, no, I know. It wasn't that they were? They must have been. Curved, the metal was curved so it could grab snow. I not only just... mention this because I don't know. It's <laughs> I, quit. I, I only mention this because it's uh, it's on my cell phone. It's a space management day in Garage Logic. Unfortunately, or fortunately, however you look at it, and I will not have a virgin track. Uh, it's already been driven over a few times. Oh, the whole winter huh. shot then is not it? really. It's supposed to get up to forty on Friday. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I have some bad news. You all know Anna from Matamidai, yeah, I loyal, sure. loyal fan. Mm-hmm. Uh, she had surgery yesterday. Oh, no. Uh, and what? she's got a cancerous brain tumor. Oh, damn oh. it. And she needs our prayers. It would mean the world to oh. her if you guys said a little something on the podcast. Well, we're rooting for you, Anna. Anna's yeah, a Matamidai yeah. girl. You should she send is. her a check, Such. Uh Anna's... Uh, Got a big job ahead of her, and I, I predict she'll survive that job. I love Anna. She's always she there. All Every event. She's always always see her. fun. Always yep. see her. Might she love have you been? She's got a tattoo of uh, Garage Logic. Is she a town here. council member, I wonder? I would absolutely have to believe she is. Mm-hmm. She's the most dedicated GL fan we have. I have a note on the town council from a fellow who wants us to have the next town council meeting in Dallas. Oh. Uh, Paul. <laughs> Wants us to have it in Dallas, where he holds down the southern chapter of uh, Dealey Plaza. Is of he this gonna, show? And I can't find his email, but he, he recommended some the, places. Uh, he's going to be up in the book depository mm, while no. we're down on Dealey. No, uh, I'm clearing up some notes. Hmm. Uh, Bill Bill Deal would have called this cleaning off his spindle. Spindle. Bill Deal had a nice ride. The didn't lexicon, he? modern, caring, sensitive male. I was listening to the November 28 podcast where you mentioned the gender of modern, caring, sensitive male. That was Downing came up with that. If I recall correctly, the proper GL term is sensitive, caring, urban male, the acronym being SCUM. Ah. That's correct. The book was modern, caring, sensitive male. Yes. But for GL purposes, it became sens- sensitive, caring, urban male. Uh, and I don't know why emailers do this to me. Tim Lottie writes, you never said anything before I have posted. Let's see if you will now. 
Well, okay. What does that mean? He uh, sent me some information on the wind turbines in Wilmer after just 13 years in operation have ended the end of their useful life. The turbines were supposed to last for 20 years, but Wilmer uh, has had difficulty finding replacement parts because the company that built them, D-Wind, has since gone out of business. The parts in question are the breakers. Who came up with that company <laughs> name? Wind. Sitting around the D corporate wind. table? He's <laughs> a marketing guy. D-Wind. Uh, Where do you nuts. get D-Wind? <laughs> this one out. It's out of D-Air. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> D-win. The parts in question are the breakers. They're tripped every time the turbine starts or stops. Kevin Marty, the super du- supervisor of WMU, explained, each breaker is rated about 8,000 and 9,000 trips in its lifespan. The current breakers have more than 10,000 trips on them. And then in a follow-up email, he notes, uh, I forgot to add this, now more hazardous race, r- waste will have to be buried somewhere, definitely not green when they last only 13 years. What kind of equipment will be needed to take these down? Well, big cats, big cranes, big flatbeds to haul them somewhere, and then a big, huge hole to bury them in. Uh, what uh, are the yuppies going to do next, plant twice as many? Yeah, I'm not a big fan of those turbines. I don't think they're very efficient. D Wind was an internationally active produce, producer of wind power plants originating in Germany. Is it Germany. spelled D E W I N D? It is literally spelled One word. D-E and then a new uppercase word. Uh, W-I-N-D. D Wind. It's the German. Wind. All yeah. I think Maybe of you is you can get over your foolishness. What is happening today? No, all the I wind? think of is where do you get the wolf urine? From D Wolves. From D Wolves. <laughs> We're sinking. We're sinking. What are you sinking? Back about? to marijuana. Uh, hey Brooke, you weren't here. John, you weren't here yesterday. And I merely was positing the idea that this is so rife with hypocrisy, I can't get over it. Uh, we have the the left, most principally the left in Minnesota, promising uh, legalized marijuana. The same crowd that uh, would won't even sell menthol cigarettes to a black guy. Remember that story came up and the the menthol cigarettes have had to come out of the convenience stores under the guise of uh, pretending to to care about black guys? Matthew, I tried to tell them that many people have done what you do and switched to gummies. You're on those gummies all day long. Gummies are fantastic. (laughs) You can can go all day long. They don't show up in the tests. uh, It's it's pretty good. Well, that might not be true. (laughs) You better stop. (laughs) Sanibel Jim spent his his life in law enforcement. And he writes, the brief discussion of marijuana and its recreational use was well-founded in your questions. I have felt the same thing. Why the push to get it approved for use everywhere? As a retired law enforcement officer, I have serious misgivings about the legalization efforts. I have included a link to what appears to be a factual summary of the use issues. I always try to find facts, and that search does not include anything presented on social media. Social media sources should always be ignored. But it was troubling to hear Kenny yesterday describe how he found everyone in Colorado to be happy. Yeah. That's a good thing, being high in huge numbers. I've seen the results of such dreaming while in Amsterdam traveling. Too small a sample, but an awful reality. Colorado is not a good example of the benefits of marijuana. There have been none. Apparently, it's good to have so much of their population stoned. Kenny is usually spot on in his comments. This time, I fear he may have been under the influence of the drug. (laughs) And then Scott from Inver Grove, speaking of Colorado... Uh, never afraid and always pushing back, says, I'm not a prude or someone who wants to squash the individual freedoms and liberties of we the people, but this drive to legalize pot is folly. I spent a long weekend in downtown Denver a few weeks ago and witnessed the effects of legalized weed in the general population. Young adults loitering and pandering on every street corner stoned out of their minds. A once beautiful city is now being ruined by everyone eating their gummies to escape the very stresses our grandparents once faced, clear-headed and without fear. Nah, they were half in the bag. (laughs) Don't get me wrong. If an adult wants to smoke an occasional joint, have at it. But we need to remember that the failed academy is turning out a new generation of snowflakes who need safe spaces should they get a bad grade on an exam. The snowflake generation is particularly adept at running to weed to dull their senses for the sole purpose of not having to feel any sort of societal stress and pain. 
To add insult to injury, the moronic voters of Colorado have now legalized recreational use of psychedelic mushrooms. Oh, boy. Stay tuned as a once pristine conservative state turns to deep blue with the migration of stoners whose sole ambition is to get up every day to do nothing. I know a large number of local area police officers who would quickly rebuke Kenny's attitude that pot is no big deal. They have firsthand knowledge that most every hard drug using addict that eventually ends up committing violent crimes to feed their addiction can be traced back to casual pot use as a teenager. On top of their weed usage, these snowflakes are mixing their gummies with copious amounts of alcohol, as can be witnessed with the mayhem that ensues at the bars and clubs like the gay 90s. Is this something we all want to have spread throughout the state? Finally, a good friend of mine is a 26-year-old son who recently was found by his brother after laying unconscious in his apartment for two days. His feet swollen with giant blood blisters that spanned the length of his feet. He He now has permanent loss of hearing. When rushed to the hospital... He told doctors that he had taken some THC-filled gummies that were nefariously laced with fentanyl. Oh, wow. Come on, do we GLers really want our kids or grandkids experiencing these sorts of tragedies? For that matter, don't we already have too much to deal with via alcohol and the plethora of issues that it creates for society? But in today's mad, mad world has become, what's the heck, let's throw another log on the fire In my opinion, this push to legalize recreational marijuana is ridiculousness on steroids, and we best all wake up and start using some GL common sense. Scott from Inver Grove. I said yesterday, I think it falls under the rubric of be careful what you wish for. I love the conversation it's generating. I'd I'd like to keep hearing from GLers on this topic. Uh, And I, I, to be honest, I don't care. I just don't care. Uh, And and I've thought for years, Such, that the Libertarian, remember how the Libertarian Party, it's like their only issue was legalizing weed. Right. Remember that? For years and years and years. It's a very Libertarian issue. And if you ask me, it held the party back because they they have all these other really good ideas, but they were just so Focused. focused on the weed. Uh, how are Don writes, I thought your observation about the hypocrisy of the left regarding the legalization of marijuana was interesting and spot on. But then again, windmilling is nothing new for the left. Kenny made some strong arguments for the legalization of weed, and I found the libertarian in me rooting for his perspective. Suddenly I had one of those hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right moments. I have a GL co-worker who moved from Seattle about three years ago to escape the insanity of being closest to the tallest buildings in the country. His past observations came to the forefront of my mind as Kenny was stumping for legalization. My co-worker has often said that things in Seattle were always a bit crazy due to the liberals running the show, but the real turning point in his eyes was when they legalized marijuana. Yeah. He also mentions the same documentary that you have, Seattle is Dying, and points to the drug use that he believes has a direct connection to many societal issues like crime, gangs, and homelessness. In his words, legalizing pot was like saying, bring it on, we want more of the craziness, and we got what we asked for. uh, Kenny makes a great point that smoking a joint is not a gateway for everyone into harder stuff, but for people who don't have Kenny's Self-restraint, wink, it, <laughs> okay. it can be a portal to a world of hurt. I would hope that most would have some level of self-control to limit their use to weed. But when you look at the states that have legalized it at this point, it would show that it opens a door that is difficult to close. Washington, California, Illinois, D.C., and Colorado are examples of what this can lead to. I don't have a horse in the race. I don't live in Minnesota anymore. But it's close enough where I think the citizens of the great state should think about the long-term impacts of legalizing weed and look at the results of states that have done so. You don't want walls to turn Minnesota into California with the mandate of EVs. Then why would you want to emulate that dumpster fire of California when it comes to legalizing drugs? That's a good point. And the negative results that come with it, not really missing Minnesota, Don. Uh, to which I would add, there would all there always will be a... A, a black market for marijuana. Always. Because e- people won't be able to afford the tax yeah. marijuana. E- even where it's legal, absolutely. Yeah. And, and I have a couple, I have, boy, I've got a bunch of questions. First of all, do you think the people that are causing these problems in Seattle and San Francisco and all these other places where weed is legal, do you think these people are new weed smokers? 
Or do you think these people are just degenerates that have finally come out of the closet and out from the alley? Degenerates. Yeah, so do I. Yeah. And also a question for all of you. Has anybody in your family admitted to you that when they go on vacation to a state where it's legal, that they might try a gummy bear? And has that surprised <laughs> you? Because I've gotten this from some relatives of mine, and I'm like, it's shocking to find out that they actually, you know, had a few gummy bears in a state that's legal. I was uh, <clears throat> making one of, one of my uh, dumb dumb runs <laughs> to another state, and when I was making that run, someone that I'm married to said, Hey, when you stop in such and such state, would you mind? And I went, say what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Something ain't right. Who, who the hell are you? I said. You want to no. gummies? Yeah. And you I can thought, buy them here. No, no, no. This no, was the, before it was legal. Right. right but oh. this was this was the good stuff. Yeah. It did has you not buy been. Them? Of course I did. Did she take one? She did. How did what happen? It was a fun time. You watched uh, a it lot was, of cartoons. It was very entertaining. Watch from the watched, chandelier. Watched that Pink Floyd movie four <laughs> times in a row. Uh, <laughs> worth reposting to the Garage Logic website, the Seattle is Dying documentary from our friends at KOMO in Seattle. I, I just love it. might as well be made about Minnesota. Or I love the discussion, and I would like to hear from people that are pro weed, too. Um, it, it's just really fascinating. But to me. I can't what, think of a reason to do this. And don't to tell me it's tax it. revenue. Le- legalize it, you mean? I can't think of a reason. Oh, I thought you meant to try it. I'm like, no. Okay. Well, I, I'm not <laughs> hey, come that. to Tattersall. Just, <laughs> yeah. It, for me, uh, and I respect your opinion, but for me, you're the person. Didn't you coin the phrase, the state where nothing is legal? Yes. I no, thought that no, was the state where so nothing is allowed. Correct. Yeah. Well, I didn't mean dope. <laughs> dope. <laughs> dope. Are you on the dope? Why, now you why do you think they Greg call it dope? <laughs> dope. <laughs> Didn't anybody watch Reefer Madness? It makes you crazy. Yeah, we talked about that yeah. yesterday. Uh, but that was... my fear is, like with those gummies, who who put it together? Right. That dude laying on the floor for two days. Right. Uh, that's what I wouldn't trust. I'd rather have a big handful of roasted pecans. <laughs> you ever have those? You know what party I'll support? Pecans. Kenny Jeez. was talking about the Nuts. Green Party. You know what party I'll support? Huh. It's Mr. McMillan, would you like 30 seconds more? Allow me to introduce myself. <laughs> I represent the rent is too damn, too damn high, high party. party. <laughs> I represent the rent is too, too damn, damn high, high party. party. <laughs> uh, I was misinformed. They do not have an original Toro snowblower. Okay. Oh. okay. Oh. A nice mm. thought, though. I'm glad you pursued that because I had completely forgotten about it. <laughs> so did the audience. And, and was more than willing to have completely forgotten Just about it. Just let her go. Yeah. Oh. I'll tell you what. Well, I'll tell you. Is hey. that, mis- is that hey, misdirected you. dedication? Let me tell you something. Misdirected dedication? I get no respect. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I was exploring my curiosity, which you always accuse me of not doing enough no, I of. understand. Okay. I understand. I want you to explore Eckberg Lammers is what I want you to do. They've been creating estate plans and wills for their clients for more than 70 years. And let me tell you, given the various topics we have that invariably include the incompetence of the government, you don't want your estate to fall into the hands of the courts. You want everything solved smoothly beforehand. We're all going to die and we all have stuff. That's just the way it is. And you don't want to leave your family a big mess when you check out. You know what I'm saying? I know exactly what you're saying. And don't be afraid of the word estate. That doesn't mean anything. It just means your stuff. And uh, Eckberg Glamours will take care of it, possibly save you some tax dollars, make sure that everything's done smoothly, and then your uh, your kids and the, the spouse that you leave behind is not running around like a chicken with the tail cut off trying to... Not chicken with a nope. tail cut off. Is it? Try again. Chicken with a head cut off. Got her. Mm. You got her. Here, try this gummy. It'll help you. So, uh, yeah. Well, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Hey, they can help sure. you with family problems, too, like transfers of property and everything. Chicken. Where's my tail? Where's All my you got to do is keep it smooth, yeah. and that's what they do, right. and it's well worth your time. Uh, I don't care how old you are. Get on this. Get on this right now. Make an appointment with Eckberg Lammers. At 651 439 2878, or visit Eckberg Lammers at eckberglammers.com slash will. And this week only, ask them about the chicken plan. <laughs> well, into the season right now, and I'm talking about it is the season. It's the season for everything, no holds barred. It is the season for burning 
non-boring candles. And that's where Spiral Light Candles come in. They are a garage logic company. It's a family that started this business in the garage, realizing that spiral light candles burn in a circular motion, and that's a conversation piece. And you're not just giving someone a candle. They have wonderful selections on colors and scents, and you can buy several different sizes. So get your order in now before the Christmas season is complete and sneaks up on you. Where do you go? You go to spirallightcandles.com. If you have a a GLer in your family, well, you might want to get the Cylinder Index candle, which you can get online. It smells like the garage. Smells fantastic. If you want to be hungry all the time, burn the mini donut candle. That, you'll be gnawing on your fingers, baby. Spiralightcandles.com. This Christmas season, this Hanukkah season, this Kwanzaa season, they don't discriminate. They just want your money. Spiralightcandles.com. Stop burning boring candles, and you will when you buy from spiralightcandles.com. Thanks, Rook. And if that candle gets out of hand, you need some water to put that fire out. How about my friends at Hofferman Water? Tis the season for new water for you and your family. And I have been a proud customer of Hofferman Water and Connecticut for years now. And I'm telling you right now, if you make the switch, you will not be disappointed. Hofferman Water has sales, service, and rental for Connecticut water treatment systems. That includes water softeners, iron rust and odor filtration systems, and, of course, drinking water systems. Had the new drinking water system installed just a couple of months ago, and, boy, it made a massive difference in the quality of drinking water inside my home. You get that new system from Connecticut, and it's going to cut down on your salt usage big time, but it's also going to protect your appliances because bad water can affect almost every aspect of your home. You get that new system from Connecticut and Hofferman, and, boy, your showers are better, your laundry is better, and, of course, so is your drinking water. So please do me a favor. Get it. In touch with my friends at Hofferman Water today, 952-894-4040. That's 952-894-4040. Or just go online and see everything that they have to offer at HoffermanWater.com. Hofferman Water has been proudly serving the state of Minnesota for over 50 years. Please tell them that you heard about them here on the Garage Logic Podcast. I ain't eating no bleeping we rack had, shack. We uh, had mac and cheese with venison wieners last night. Oh, huh. delicious. Now, believe it or not, I think that sounds fantastic. Are we back? Oh. Yeah. I didn't realize. That's usually what happens when I say, hey, I'm rolling. I'll start acting more professional here. <laughs> Truth, justice, and the sucheree. Uh, that little brat in your life, I don't care if it's a son, daughter, niece, nephew, grandkid, you want to make them happy? You want to bribe them? You want them in your pocket for life? Hell yeah. You get up to Moon Motorsports and buy that kid a mini bike or a player sportsman 110 ATV, put it under the tree, and you won't believe how happy you'll make them. And if you're like me, you're going to buy yourself a present for Christmas because nobody can get it right. Well, I'm going to tell you who's going to get it right for you. Moon Motorsports. They have all the brands you need right now. Triumph, Ducati, BMW, KTM. Are you hearing how good I sound today? You sound very (laughs) voluptuous. This is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Husqvarna, Honda, Yamaha, Can-Am. They've got them all. You buy one right now, Moon Motorsports. They'll either, A, deliver it to you right to your Minnesota home, or B, provide free winter storage Uh, you can see all the options all the brands at moonmotorsports.com they are our minnesota motorcycle atv side-by-side service parts and sales provider right there on the south side of 94 west of 25 in monticello and on the web moonmotorsports.com sam brit brinton yeah Yeah. oh boy Uh uh-huh one of the first See, it's important to be first, even if you're absolutely. You gotta be first. You gotta yeah. be a first. One of the first openly gender fluid individuals in federal government leadership. Uh, he st- allegedly stole wim- woman's luggage at, here in Minneapolis. We have to put in this story that is an MIT grad. Yeah, that's important. Uh, he announced his new role as the Deputy Assistant of Waste Disposition in the U.S. Department of Energy. Is one of, if not the only, first openly gender-fluid individual in federal government leadership. I, uh, I had the printer uh, cut me off there. <laughs> he said he's not a Biden appointee, but instead was hired as a career employee. Prior to working in government, he was an anti-conversion therapy a- activist. Anti-conversion. Oh, so if somebody's trying to convert 
He's therapy. telling the people. So what is this screwball? Wait a minute, wait a, a minute. man Anti- or a woman or gender? Therapy. Yeah, some dad says, hey, you got to throw yeah. Johnny in the, uh, we want to change him. We don't want him to do this. He's a member of the Drag Let's Queen Society called oh. Sisters of Perpetual something. So printer. wait a minute. No, no, no. Stop, Such. Let's get to the bottom of this. Anti-conversion therapy. therapy. So yeah. if, if you have a kid or somebody who, th- who wants to be, uh, a boy wants to be a Switch, girl. right. Does the switch, he would counsel them against it? No, he would counsel no, them against the, returning them to straightness. Okay. So in other words, if the parents were trying to convert the child back, he'd, he would he'd say, be in there fighting be, for them to have removed their appendages. Okay. All right. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Uh, mm-hmm. He goes by the name Sister Ray D. O. Active. Hey, what's my favorite name? Oh, I can't say it, can I? No. Clint. Uh, yeah. This is September 16. A, an adult female victim said she flew into MSP on a Delta flight from New Orleans, was waiting around Carousel 7, and this yeah. fruitcake, whatever it happens. he pretends to be, uh, he stole her luggage. Wait, you, is that serious? That's that's where it happened? No, I'm, I'm just joking. Oh, you <laughs> said it like so emphatically. Yeah, exactly. it happened spot. here, though. No, I know. That's what I, he. That's why I thought he had something there. But not in your airport, in the other one, right? That's then he took the one, bag yeah. to yeah. Europe, and he went all over, because I'm sure he's very important. So he's not even trying to hide behind, I took the bag because it looks like my bag. He just took that bag. You know what? Uh, I wasn't it, able to get to the bottom And this idiot won't get fired. No, of course not. No. From his job, t- he, his job title is what again? He's in charge of where you put nuclear waste. Oh boy, he he has been placed on leave already. Yeah, with but pay now, now whether that'll result in you know anything paid further, paid leave, who knows? Mean? Paid leave. You know, I'm just so tired. The, of this the BS. only the only thing that struck me though is I thought, what is he? A man or a woman? He was. Boy, what was he born? What did you, say? What did you call him? He was born what male. What do you call him? Gender he was fluid. Born male. Yep. I'm looking but at it gender. changes from day to day, right? That's that's what fluid means. Fluid. Yeah. But once a thief, that I, never changes. You're always a thief. Always a crook. You're yeah. always a crook. Well, always <laughs> loofing. Yeah. Simply put, a gender fluid person is someone who does not identify themselves as Over. having a fixed <laughs> gender. Gender fluid people experience gender flux, fluctuations over time, and they tend to steal luggage. <laughs> Look Good up. One. Here we go. Okay. A sacrilegious drag queen society. Oh, boy. Can I get through the... I think they're called Sisters of Perpetual Something. And they have names like Sister Porn Again, Sister Chastity Boner, (laughs) and Sister Roz Erection. Okay. Uh, So we're going to rip nuns in this this ass. I I don't know, but I love the names. They're they're amusing (laughs) names to me. And his name is Sister Radioactive. What would your drag name be, Joe? I wouldn't have uh, one. What are they of... The Sacrilegious Drag Queen Society, known as Sisters of Perpetual Something. That's where the printer cut me out. Something that begins I-N-D. Indulgence. Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. Indulgence. Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. There we go. This is is your government employee who's a first. He's going to help you discard nuclear waste. He's a thief, allegedly, and he's a complete (laughs) nutcase. All right. I did that uh, when I was doing some research on this this morning because I grabbed the story. Yeah. I, I went to his Wikipedia page just because I was curious, of course. And I tell me what this means. Britain is married to Kevin Reek. They told Metro Weekly they are an animal role play enthusiast. Oh. Come on, bark like a dog for me. Well, they luff each other. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, it's squeal like a pig. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah. Hey, I don't know, John. Uh, I don't uh, know, but I. I thought maybe you guys could help me. This with that. government is. Oh, here's what's really weird. I'll say this about Trump: he wouldn't have hired this fruitcake. Probably wouldn't have hired that yeah, guy. Although this guy says Biden didn't hire him, he's a career employee who somehow, because he's a first, somebody saw points to be gotten within the realm there. Hey, I got a first. We can get this. This nutcase can be in charge of nuclear waste. May I ask a question? Why not? If you're someone that spends twenty five hundred dollars on luggage, you kind of deserve it. No, you don't. <laughs> that's you don't deserve it to have it stolen by this idiot who's then wearing your clothes. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, they are a charity, <laughs> protest, and street performance organization that uses drag and religious imagery to call attention to sexual intolerance and satires issues of gender and morality. Did you ever see this freak? 
<clears throat> is he just uh, bald? Yeah. He's hairless. Bald with, yeah, oh. yeah. It's not a. That's not mine. He's got pretty good gams though. If you so, if you saw any pictures of him in a dress, they're legal. Five hundred one C three. That's your uh, that's your fellow in the Department of Energy. That's uh, well, they're not doing too hot. Revenue of one hundred and forty one in twenty seventeen. One hundred forty one dollars. And then expenses were one hundred ninety four thousand. Oh, they're upside down. Yep. Probably used to that. I, I, I uh, <laughs> you know, Joe, you're paying the, him. You're paying his salary. Well, apparently not enough. He can't afford luggage. Right. <laughs> you fruitcake. How you doing? I, 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 I just don't. No. What does it take Listen, to get fired? You with karma. <laughs> The but. Angels of Light first appeared in a mock nativity scene at Grace's Cathedral Christmas Eve Midnight Mass in 1970. Are they out of their mind? See, my policy on that is it, you can be a non-believer if you want, yeah. but just for safety's sake, don't mess with them. I, right. Just I let, them, safe. let them go. Yep. Just let them be and don't mess with them just in case. Well, let's see these cowards do this with another faith. Let's oh, let's see it take Islam. on the Muslims. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would not work. No, it's just like PETA people never complain about leather use at a biker bar. Fact based. <laughs> yeah, Stacy is weighing in because she's part of the Garage Logic Town Council. I thought you were going to tell me she's part of this group. No. Well, that I don't know, Stacy. You can confirm or deny <laughs> no. if you're part of this group. The contents of all of the luggage was twenty five hundred dollars, not the oh, actual piece you go. of the luggage. Reavers. Okay, so oh, okay. I. I apologize. So to... it's just some cruddy carry-on she got from the NBA in the eighties, right? Oh no, wait, that was me. <laughs> still, <laughs> still using it. Does that look serious? Does that happen a lot? Luggage stealing at the airport? It's not luggage stealing. So, I've only been involved in uh, mistakes. Somebody has the exact same floral pattern and they don't look at the tag. It takes ten seconds what? to look at the tag. Right. Wait but a the minute, stuff that Matthew. Go- well, you're really up on this, aren't well, you? Wait a minute, My Matthew. At the airport. That mm-hmm. means. She had to open the luggage, rifle through it, pick out what she liked. Correct. And this would all be on camera. And then load it in her luggage. Yeah. This would all be on if camera. If that doesn't get you fired from the government, what will? Nothing. That's third class, third rail protection for this idiot. That's not even. In, have but it's a job. first. It's a first. Matt, to anybody. Did, I got I know where this person can put the nuclear waste. Oh. Probably plenty of room. I got you. Right. I got you. Yeah. So, uh, are people making a career out of this stealing luggage? No. No, I don't know. I don't know how this guy it's not thought he'd get profitable. Away with it. And, and, and in most of the time, it's accidental, right? Uh, honest yes, mistake. I have never seen anybody actually yeah. take on honest purpose. Mistake. All right. Why don't we take a time out and return with our friend John Height? We can, Joe. But how about first? All right. I tell you about our friends at Rise and Shine Garage Doors. Boy, was I happy I got that second opener installed with my garage door because I had the folks from Rise and Shine come out. And that's because I called 651-300-3252. That's right. That's the direct number to call riseandshine.com. Is the website, too, if you need to get in touch and see all their services that they have on their website. They're fantastic. A couple of GLers own them, by the way. That's Josh and Alex right here in the Twin Cities. They do residential, commercial repairs, and installations of all things related to the garage door. And uh, they have a perfect five-star rating on both Google and Yelp. And that's because their number one objective is customer service. You're going to get a 5% discount for seniors, military, and AAA members. And all of their technicians are certified. If you're not inside the Twin Cities metro area, that's okay. They're expanding. Rochester, St. Cloud, Mankato, Northfield. They even cover parts of western Wisconsin. And don't forget to ask about the Rooster Club membership. That includes a tune-up on an annual basis, and they will waive the trip charge. So go online. Call RiseAndShine.com. Set up their appointment. Seven days a week service. Please, please, please let them know that you heard about them here on the Garage Logic Podcast. We're right in the middle of the season. What season? Holiday lights. It's that time of year, isn't it? It's that time of year, Kenny. I got to tell you, holiday lights, when they're hung professionally, are very, very 
uh, fun to look at. When you hang them yourselves and they're droopy and all that other crap, don't climb up on the ladder. It snowed now. Do you know the Kahuna Window Cleaning at KahunaWindowCleaning.com? They do other seasonal services, and this is the season for holiday lights. Exterior illumination. Yes, you put the trim right above the gut. And you know what? I don't want to go up to second level to put those lights up. No. And your cousin Eddie will show up while you're standing there admiring him. Exactly. Yeah. And you know what? They're not going to blow anything up. They're not going to pop any of the fuses. What they're going to do is show up on time, do a very efficient job with hanging those holiday lights. And you can worry about the window cleaning and the gutter cleaning next year in the spring when the snow is gone. But right now, they are full throttle with taking appointments at 612-888-5248 or go to kahunawindowcleaning.com. Take the stress off of hanging holiday lights. They're almost into December now. Now is the time to get on their schedule. 612-888-5248. That's kahunawindowcleaning.com. And that one time. Oh, that was great. You like shot the puck? <laughs> Did you ever play goalie? <laughs> Give well, me a liner. Here's dummy. a guy what that was, forgot to play I'm a liner. Sorry, here. What was Gilles Malash really like? You cannot stop him. He'll just make a move. <laughs> I just tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm Neil Broughton, I'm going to talk about him. Hey, Broughton. Uh, Cicerelli. 63 years old today. Oh, Brat. How do you know this? Is he really? I read the paper. Well, that was the story? <laughs> no, it's in the birthdays. <laughs> oh. You read the birthdays? <laughs> to see you how many say, people. <laughs> hey, I wonder, I wonder who's the same age as I am. I wonder who they are. They're 10 years younger than I am. Do you <laughs> read the old bits? Wow. What about the old bits? Do I you every read those? day, faithfully. Oh, my God. Yeah. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> We're talking about Stia, North Star Great, she my died, hero. She died of heavy duty luffing. <laughs> <laughs> Excessive bluffing. Steve Payne oh, being yes. at the uh, our little thing. I thought Tatters you were going to do an ad. What, what are we doing? We're yeah. going to Tattersall. That's where our town council members only meeting will be there. It's in Wisconsin, uh, and that's going to be tomorrow. Four to Does the council members have a card or an ID of some sort? That yes, they do. Yeah. Signifies yeah. Card, their membership. Baby. Yeah, there's yep, no yep. honor system for our listeners. No. We're, this is a legitimate deal. <laughs> so we will be having our first Garage Logic Town Council. No honor system. Yep, no honor, and because there, there's no honor, we don't trust them. It will be for <laughs> members only at Tattersall Distillery in River Falls, Wisconsin. Join Three the GL crew for of ID. complimentary apps beginning at four with the live Garage Logic podcast to follow at five. Are them apps being catered? What we do, or does Tattersall make food? They have food up there. <laughs> They've got food. I've been there. It's a fantastic place. All right. And I'm going to go get my soury, sour cherry bottle of booze for my wife. All right. It's a liqueur that she loves. Uh, it's only open to town council members and members who wish to attend should RSV in the town council member platform at garagelogic.com. <laughs> Showstopper ahead. <laughs> Not a member and want to be at this exclusive and official meeting to see uh, Gil? Not a problem. Sign up for the town council right now at garagelogic.com. Then RSP for the event. See you on November 30th. That's tomorrow. Don't Holy. RSP. RSVP, Gil. Don't RSPV. <laughs> RSV. Viola. RV. There it is. Viola. <laughs> Viola. Still, I did to steal that from you. RV, RSVP. Respondez, s'il vous plaît. Mm-hmm. Give Please. me that squealing tire. Ferme thing. la bouche. Uh, that, that fits in for what I have to you, say. You should add ferme la gauche. That means shut up. Ferme la gauche means. Ferme What's la bouche mean? Ferme la bouche means close your mouth. Oh. But if you tell me, hey, shut up, it's ferme la gauche. Ferme la gauche. Yeah. yeah, there we go. One more time. Ferme la gauche. <laughs> All morning long. Tires, Holy tires, God. tires. Oh, yeah. Check your tires. Mr. Mike Schoonover, the owner-operator of Schoonover Body Works in Glass County, E, Lexington, and Shoreview. He'd be here today if people had good tires, uh, but he's not. Too many people have cruddy tires, so he's at work trying to catch up on all the work lined up in the parking lot as a result of cruddy tires. Uh, so the next time you swing into Schoonover's, you know, oil change, uh, whatever... Have them check your tires, and if you're really smart, if you really want to do the GL thing, do it the right way, invest in a set of snow tires, and then have Scooney and the boys 
swap them out spring and fall. Bingo, bango, bongo. That's a brilliant Work idea. Work smarter, not harder. And if you need body work, uh, there's absolutely no reason to go anywhere else. They're always rated as one of the best shops in town uh, because they do great work. I know, Joe, you're pretty deep in um, in bed with them right now due to some crap can you accidentally bought um, over the weekend. Paint, <laughs> body work, general repairs, oil change, frame swap, uh, fix an old piece of crap that some dumb dumb bought uh, off the Internet. They can do it all. <laughs> The greatest body shop. What am I talking about here? Anyway, I don't know, but you, your voice sounds so great. It doesn't just matter. Rambling endlessly. Scoot over body works in glass. Uh, you read the birthdays, huh? Sorry, Mike. Yeah. He reads the birthdays, yeah. Well, you want me to explain that to you? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I do. I, first I of really, all, I read I really the paper. Do. Yes. Yeah, I, know I read the paper. You, you read it from front to finish. And you even page, read the tuna fish recipes. On page two every day in the Star Tribune is... Famous birthdays. Okay. And I only read them to see if I know who the people are. Okay. And increasingly, I don't you know don't, who they you are. You don't, because, okay. But today, I knew everyone. Yeah. I knew everyone. Let's, let's hear them. Chuck Mangione, 82. Oh. Joel Cohen, 68. Howie Mandel, 67. Neil Broughton, 63. Don Cheadle, 58. And Stefan Diggs, 29. Okay. And Hans is a member of the Garage Logic Town Council and wants us to know it's Bill Baker's birthday today. He's 66. Bill Baker, the hockey player? I don't know. I'm guessing. Uh, I also read the paper, and there was a very interesting question that came up in the paper. I don't know if you saw this this morning. Uh, They're asking for a seven-letter word uh, (laughs) type of sprout in salads. What would that be? Seven letters. One, two, three, four. Joe, first of all, a wheat penny (laughs) is worth way more than a penny. I have a jar of wheat pennies, and they vary in value from three cents to twenty dollars. Wow! It may be worth your time to take a look. It might surprise you. This is a note I'm getting uh, from huh. from Paul. Uh, I don't know how I would determine if a wheat penny is worth twenty bucks. Rook, yesterday, a guy said he's making some uh, homemade Christmas gifts, and he wants to inlay a wheat penny in them. And I said, I'll bring him some to the town council membership okay. meeting. Uh, and then, but here's the brunt of his email. Attached is a photo of my last visit to China. I work for an international cargo airline. At any rate, the extent the Chinese go through is so over the top, it is laughable. My co pilot and I discussed at what point these people will revolt against this complete craziness. Hmm. We're already seeing the revolt. We are met at the airplane with people in hazmat suits and driven through customs into the hotel in a van that has passenger compartments encased in a bubble. Wow. I'm required to have an N95 mask on at all times and am followed closely behind by a person spraying where I walked with a mixture of alcohol and bleach. Jeez. Attached is a photo of the elevator to my hotel room. As you can see, they have sprayed it so much with cleaning solution that it is rusting and corroding at an alarming rate. I, sh- I looked at all his pictures. I am not allowed to leave my room during my layover or I will face arrest. My thoughts is that the Chinese are so far over this COVID protection that they will no longer have an immune system that can handle even a simple cold or flu virus. Uh, Then he also also attached some pictures of something else. My point being that uh, they, what's happening in China is very akin to the theme of these books that I've loved, these Tom Rob Smith books. Child 44, Read for that. example. The theme in, in communist Russia was we don't have crime. Right. It doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. Well, of course it does, but the authorities deny it. Russia. And say it doesn't exist, and, the, and, the, and the, uh, the focus of Child 44 was a detective with almost a fully formed conscience saying, this is BS and I have to do something right, about it. Right. And it becomes a harrowing, harrowing, marvelous tale. So How are they going to get out of it? Next so time? so what? this is China. We don't have COVID. Okay. Well, the, yes, you do. Then why are you walking around? And you happen? can't ever be COVID free. So ever. This, this is global news. Most of the world knows about this. Do you think the average citizen in China knows about the protesting going on? Yes. You do? I do. I think they're awakening to it. They're... There, and, and we need to root for hundreds of millions of people to go on the streets. And uh, they, the, the, 
the the administration, the dictatorship, is essentially trying to insist to the world, none of none of us are buying it. They're insisting to the world, we don't have COVID. And in order to make that happen, which they cannot do, they've locked up their people. Right. And you know there are mothers who haven't seen their children in months. This isn't going to lead to another situation like we saw right prior uh, before the wall came down. Tiananmen Square? What, no, no, I mean when the wall came down in Germany. I hope it does. The protests that led to that. I hope it does. Because be these people are nuts. Because uh, The administration is nuts. According to the Chinese, the officials, Tiananmen Square didn't happen. It did not happen. Right. We do not have problems. Right, right. And you know that the only platform in which this is not being censored is currently Twitter. Every other platform, it is being censored. The it protests. Is? Oh, God, yes. Soviet Russia, 1955. We don't have crime. Well, TikTok is is a China-operated oh, company. Oh, of course it is. Yeah. Yeah. So I was pleased it, to it's see It's all this. over the news, though. Right. I but mean, every, everybody's But I meant from a social media standpoint, Twitter is the oh, only one that's, that's yeah. not censored. Oh, that's fascinating. I didn't know that. Yeah. And you know and, why? Because of who currently... And this pilot has sent me yeah. harrowing yeah, photographs of how they're followed around by the people... You know, the, the wow. security people, and if they leave their room, they're going to be arrested. They can't, they, can't get, they can't get away with this, which the people are awakening to. You can't keep us locked up forever so you can say there's no COVID. But right? think of the number of people, though, and I still see this, the number of people that are still okay with this type of action, lockdowns In and China? mandates. All, across the world. Hell, there are people here that are completely okay with it. Well... Where's that map of COVID stuff that we used to always reference? I, I don't, well, I, I don't even mention. I'm so glad it's gone. Hmm. Uh, this is uh, this is incredible. Uh, Such can the average Chinese uh, citizen hop on a plane and get the hell out? That's of a there? good question. I have no. Not idea. if what's his name steals your luggage. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> Bitman or bite me, Doctor uh, Radioactive. Right. <laughs> Whatever his name is. Sister. Sister. sister radio. Radio. Isn't that a song? That's a song. I keep thinking, John. Who, who, well, it's the song Radioactive who, by the firm. Imagine I'm Radioactive. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. Uh, in any event, they're continuing, to, uh, they're continuing to uh, riot in, in China. And my theory is easy for me to say. Uh, I'm not going to get my head beat in with a two by four, but if enough of them went into the streets... They have to win. They don't have that many military. They, they, they outnumber they, them. Yeah. They actually, though, and I'll have it in the news, they've kind of stymied all the protests at this point. Yeah, they're not going to no, win, nobody's, nobody's going back out today. Yeah, that's and, super optimistic, Such. That, and they're a, hunting, and they're hunting people naive. down. Yeah. Yeah, they're hunting people down in their houses who yeah, they knew were there. No, that's not going to happen. So, yeah, unfortunately. But, I, that, but that's the theme of the Tom Rob Smith books. We don't have crime. Right. Why? Because we're telling you we don't. It's to the point, too, Joe, where, and I'm trying to find the thread I saw yesterday, where they can, in China now, they can contact, they were able to contact trace one person that decided to go for a run without a mask on and the number of people that that person infected. That's beyond psychosis that we're at this point. Well, this pilot is a great point. Their immune systems are getting so rendered so inefficient that they'll all die the common cold, which China will deny exists. Right. Do we all agree they invented the virus? I agree. Yes. <clears throat> Careful. That's disinformation. EcoFun Motorsports has two great locations. Christmas shopping is right up your alley at EcoFun. The Forest Lake stores on Highway 97, immediately west of 35E, and the Burnsville stores on the service road of life, near County Road 42, right near 35W. We're talking about the electric bikes, the scooters that turn every errand into an adventure, heated storage if you need it. These are the lowest prices offered now since before COVID. Over 100 youth ATVs and dirt bikes in stock, ready to wrap and place under the tree this Christmas. They'll keep it for you until Christmas. Uh, They got the Rover, 200cc electronic fuel injection, golf carts they're a grand off they're 62.99 they've got the full-size atv with a 2,000 pound winch and a 48 inch kfi steel snow blade you're going to need that today that's on sale 58.99 
0% financing for one year on all products at stock, in stock. Great clothing, great apparel, helmets, service, really great people. There's two stores now. Forest Lake on 97, immediately west of 35. If you're in that neighborhood, get off right now. Give the snow a break. Get off right now. There get in go. there. And then the store in Burnsville on the service road near County Road 42. And uh, find out much more, of course, and uh, really, really get tempted on their website, ecofunmotorsports.com. Is it the season for a new floor? It is. <laughs> it's the time. You know what? Of the season. It's not the season. What? It's never the season. He huh? took the glasses for a new off. Kitchen he needs, floor. He needs business. It's never the Are you season. You going mad now? Yes. Right now, I'm oh. going for Redmonds. Of oh. course, Redmonds.com. It's not the season. Please explain. It's always a good time. Oh. There isn't a. There isn't an end. Like. On the thirtieth or the last week of the month, that's right. a, that's when the season ends. It's you. year round, three sixty five and one quarter days. Redmond's wonderful, wonderful flooring and design store in Anoka for the last half a century, fully open to the public, no appointments necessary. But if you want to poke around to get some ideas, you do that. Redmond's dot com, R E D M A N N S dot com. What do they feature? Service, not overnight service. They're not doing this in one day. They are going to work with you. Get the plan together, and then they're going to order all the stuff, and then they're going to install it, and you're going to be happy as a bee. Are bees happy? You're going to be happy with Redmond's Flooring and Design. I'll give you their telephone number. You can call them, 763-316-3332, but it's best to just go online to redmonds.com. They work with Mohawk, which is the premier name in flooring, as I'm sure you already know because you've heard me talk about the new kitchen floors, the new living room floors, downstairs, get rid of that shag carpet, and update it. Give it a fresh look with redmonds.com. Rolling, and I don't care. Do it that way, Just do it. Do it that way. That's awesome. You might it's as well jump as we know it, and he <laughs> feels fine. <laughs> Joe Suchere. Oh, yeah, not me. Here's John Height in yeah. the newsroom. Yeah. Thank you very much, Joe. Before we get to news, let me tell like you about practiced. Rivertown Medical Center in Stillwater. If you are not familiar with them, they specialize in regenerative medicine and regenerative cell therapy. Uh, big issues these days, peripheral neuropathy. That causes you to have some pain, numbness, tingling in the hands or feet. Happens to folks as they grow older and some folks who are not so old. But uh, your doctor will probably tell you there's not a whole lot you can do about it. But Dr. Dan and Rivertown Medical Center can help you out with new treatment methods that can provide a relief as long as you have not sustained at least 85% nerve damage. Rivertown Medical Center and Stillwater can help with new treatment methods that help with the lack of blood flow to the nerves. That's what causes the nerves to die off, and uh, that causes the subsequent neuropathy. Mm. You can join Dr. Dan for a free one-hour seminar about this breakthrough treatment for neuropathy this Saturday, 10 in the morning in Woodbury at La Quinta by Windham, 700 Bielenberg Drive in Woodbury. Call 651 651- 661-4311. Leave your name and cell number. You'll automatically get a text reservation for the seminar. Everyone there gets a free neuropathy scan and uh, feel free to bring a guest with you. Again, it's this Saturday, the seminar, 10 in the morning, La Quinta by Wyndham, 700 Bielenberg Drive in Woodbury, 651-661-4311. Leave your name and cell number. You'll get a text reservation for a seminar that could free you from the pain of peripheral Neuropathy. Johnny, sometimes one of my hands will just start tingling for no reason mm-hmm. at all. Uh, so He's I immedi- not the doctor. So I immediately grab my cell phone and start erasing stuff, getting you know, because I'm you know, it's over. You're worried. Something. And by the time I'm done erasing stuff, the tingling has gone away. Chris, but it pay is un- it's unnerving. Okay. You don't want to know what I'm doing? Yeah, finding you a score. Oh, a score. Oh. Well, you're pretty p- optimistic that you think there'd actually be a score. Well, that's I I have no idea what how soccer works. Right? Here's John with it's the news. It's a great game for well, socialism. Thank you. Nothing Kenny. happens. Nothing ever happens. No. In the news, a Lakeville man has been formally charged for last week's deadly shooting at a Bloomington strip mall. 47-year-old Aaron Lee has been charged by a warrant with one count of second-degree murder, another charge of attempted second-degree murder. He remains in custody in Kay County, Oklahoma. The shooting, uh, remember in the news last week, happened at an Asian restaurant located in a shopping center near 89th Street and Penn Avenue. There, police say two men were found shot, a 49-year-old regular of the restaurant and a 25-year-old server. 
The 49-year-old didn't survive. However, the server was shot in the leg is expected to recover. According to the complaint, Lee walked to the table the customer was sitting at, pointed a gun at him, but he was then chased out of the restaurant. But he came back in. Multiple people tried to take the gun out of his hand and get him outside, but he shot the 49-year-old multiple times, according Jeez. to the complaint. According to the complaint, witnesses said a middle-aged man wore a Halloween mask and a maroon-colored hooded top. The suspect dropped the gun, picked it up, and put it in a Ziploc bag before he left in a white van. The document goes on to say the 49-year-old customer was dating a woman who either recently divorced or was in the process of divorcing a man named Kai Lee, and Lee was jealous of the man's interactions with his ex. Lee had previously changed his name from Kai to Aaron. The complaint says Lee was pulled over in Oklahoma after his phone was tracked and had been turned off after the morning of November 23rd. If convicted, Lee faces a maximum of 40 years in prison. Have you seen any of the press conferences Conducted by the Bloomington police chief. I have. Booker yes. somebody. Mm-hmm. He's going mm-hmm. places. Yeah. He uh, he doesn't suffer fools gladly. Yesterday, didn't they charge the kid that was involved in that school shooting? I think they did. Booker, huh. uh, Booker talks a hard game. Yeah. He's going to he clean up this time. I Tom? hope he. Uh, I hope he. Succe- I hope he succeeds. Don't come into my parish. Well, that's basically what he's saying. Yeah. Yeah. Minnesota Court of Appeals ruled Monday that a state board must reconsider its rejection of a substitute teaching license for former police officer who shot and killed Philando Castile in 2016. Geronimo Yanez applied to be a substitute teacher in 2020, but his application was denied based on, quote, immoral character or conduct. The appeals court ruled that this reason was unconstitutionally vague and the Minnesota Professional Educator Licensing and Standards Boards must reconsider focusing narrowly on whether Yanez's conduct makes him unfit to teach, not his police record. Yanez, a former St. Anthony police officer, shot Castile during a traffic stop after Castile, who was black, said he had a gun. Authorities later discovered that Castile, a 32-year-old elementary school cafeteria worker, had a permit for the firearm. Yanez was charged with manslaughter but was acquitted by a jury. The shooting and Yanez's subsequent acquittal led to a public outcry and protests in Minnesota and beyond. During the application process, the board's disciplinary committee investigated Yanez's case and recommended that his application be denied. I think he's the perfect fit for the failed academy. Uh, you are talking about Dr. Booker T. Hodges, Bloomington's police chief. He's a doctor? He has a doctorate in public administration from Hamlin University, huh. a wow. master's of Master of Arts in public safety administration from St. Mary's University, and a Bachelor of Science in criminology from Florida Southern College. Joe, could nice. you pay attention? Uh, I have a question for you. What <laughs> What did you mean by he's a perfect fit for the failed universe, uh, academy? The guy who shot yeah. the Phil- Philando? Yeah. Well, he just didn't, I mean, they, they have no standards in the schools, so he'd be a perfect fit. I don't understand. Uh, never mind. It's not worth ex- trying to explain. He's, I think he was saying he, he wasn't a very good cop. He was a he lousy, a very lousy good... cop, okay. so, so I'm so saying might not he's be a perfect fit for okay. failed academy. Oh, all right, I yeah. got you now. Thank you. Sorry. Just... Yeah. The former Chisago County Sheriff who pled guilty to harassment charges in 2020 back in a courtroom yesterday, appearing before a judge in a new criminal case. Prosecutors charged Rick Duncan in October with five counts of criminal sexual conduct. With this the guy was getting away with a lot of stuff, wasn't he? Uh-huh. Yeah. The allegations go back to 2017 when investigators say Duncan coerced a woman he knew into having sex with him. Special prosecutor from Crow, Ring, uh, Crow Wing County argued that Duncan can be held on bond given the seriousness of the charges. Uh, prosecutor Kelsey Hops brought up Duncan's criminal record. In 2020, he was sentenced to four years of probation for the stalking and harassment of a female co-worker from the sheriff's office. Jeez. An internal investigation found that Duncan misused his position of power and trust. A judge approved Duncan's release without bail as long as he stays in the state, doesn't have any contact with the victim, avoids using any guns or weapons, and stays law-abiding. Uh, Duncan's next hearing is scheduled for February. Oh. First responders were called to Upper Red Lake Monday. This happens about once a year now, doesn't it? Yeah, we Honor get report. this story pretty much like yeah. clockwork. 200 people, John? Yeah, a report of people fishing off an ice chunk that broke free from shore, <laughs> according to the Beltrami County Sheriff's Office. 
The sheriff's office says it was first notified about the situation just after 1130 in the morning and told that while the initial number they said was an estimated 100 individuals were stranded on the ice. Uh, as Kenny said, that turned out to be 200. Uh, what they did was they placed a ice bridge, temporary ice bridge over open water at the JR JR's corner access point to help people get off the ice. By 2.40 p.m., they said it was around 200 people who had been evacuated from the ice. Sheriff's office also used the incident to remind people that uh, ice is never ice is safe. Uh, does, I have a hope about yes. Does anybody know how thick the ice actually was? I don't. I do not. No. I have well, a ray of hope about that's this. That's an important part of the story. We live in a time. Mean? We live in a time when we we think that the government is involved with every aspect of our lives, which they are. But but on, in relation to this story, I heard the DNR does not measure ice thickness, and right. you're on your own. Right. You're yeah. on your own. Well, isn't that basically to, so we're they running don't have a lot light. of stuff where you're on your own? John, do you remember when we brought this up on Krabby Coffee and Dawn absolutely freaked out? <laughs> yeah, she's, because she doesn't no, like water. Uh, she doesn't like water, and ice scares her. And I had gone out on new ice. It was one, two inches of ice. And I took a picture, and the, the ice was so clear you could see right through it. Oh, yeah. Freaked her really? out. Really? And yeah. then I got oh, my yeah. chipper yeah. out, and I started chipping. You know, and it went in after a couple of inches. And she thinks the government should get involved. In yep. that. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, oh, it no, was no. so awesome. It how was could so you be awesome. afraid of water? How would you like? How could you not? Uh, she doesn't well, like I'll, things with water. I'll back her up. I don't like being on the ice either. It, it gives me anxiety. Well, she doesn't like the ocean. Oh, yeah, that part. Mostly okay. It's the ocean. Well, I don't gotcha. like the ice, but I like water. Yeah, there's a lot going on down there. We don't know what's happening. That's right. And plus, you're <laughs> swimming in fish poop. You keep that in mind. That doesn't right, bother then. me. So let me ask a question. How were they me, safe if this chunk of ice floated out? It was substantial enough to support their weight. Okay. Thank you. But if I, they didn't get rescued, they'd still be blowing around out right. there. In my younger days, I was always proud to be the first person out on the ice, even if it was caving and creaking as I was walking oh. out there. Uh, these days, I like to let other people be the leader. <laughs> Get out there first. I told you before, my mother did a horrible thing to us uh, when we were kids. If she had to go someplace, she'd say, under pain of mortal sin, That's right. do wow. not go on that on, ice. On the ice. And we'd just freeze there. We'd stop and think, we're going to die. We're going to die. If we no. do anything, we're going to die. <laughs> what's the... It worked. Uh, Such, what's the town on the south side of Lake Minnetonka where the boat show's at every year? Mount? Excelsior. Excelsior. Uh, Excelsior. When I was a courier, it's I would... Not there use, anymore. I would use the uh, the lake as a shortcut in the winter. I would just oh. drive in my in my <laughs> Honda Accord. I would drive from <laughs> Excelsior to Wyzetta, and you save... It a, is a hell of a shortcut. A, you save a ton of time. There's no speed limit on the lake, so no. you can, you know, crank her up. You're on to Accord. Yeah. He might make it back up on the street. We'll see. Just bottoming out and sparks, you know, the whole deal. In the immortal words of Mitch Hedberg, man, that is some rural bleep. <laughs> see, I would have driven along the shoreline. It would have taken twice as long. Yeah. <laughs> People in China, we talked about this earlier, who attended weekend protests against COVID restrictions say they've been contacted by police yeah. as authorities begin clamping down. Several people in Beijing said police had called demanding information about their whereabouts over the weekend. It's unclear how police might have discovered their identities. On Tuesday, officials renewed a promise to speed up efforts to vaccinate older people. Vaccination rates among elderly people are relatively low in China. China has recorded record numbers of new cases in recent days. Over the weekend, thousands in China took to the streets demanding an end to COVID lockdowns, with some even making rare calls for President Xi Jinping to stand down. But on Monday, planned protests in Beijing did not happen after officers surrounded all assembly points. In Shanghai, large barriers were, uh, were erected along with the main protest route, and police made several arrests in the area. Can we return to the effort to legalize marijuana? Sure. Sure. Is this a fair statement? We, we already have in our presence enough malignant idleness. If you, if you went through 38th in Chicago over the last two years, it's just malignant idleness, people wandering around. Now I add dope to that. It's only going to get worse. Is it possible to throw out a 
conspiracy theory. Oh, please do, yeah. Is it possible that the, the left wants everybody to be completely zoned you know, out? Because they're one hell of a lot easier to control. It's funny you say that because I've had that discussion. I, mm-hmm. I thought one of the letter writers... Uh, Maybe uh, I'm stealing the idea from somebody. Yeah, I think yeah. they addressed that yeah. in one of the emails yeah. you read. Is it possible... Is that this is all part of a big plan. But my comeback, and I don't disagree with the line of thinking, but my comeback to that is the government is too damn stupid and too damn big to pull something like that off. No, they're not. They are too stupid. Well, look what they're pulling off <laughs> due to their stupidity. Okay. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. Fair. You're okay with people in pain or people that need it to Of course. Use it. Yeah. I think uh, be showing my inner geek here, wasn't that one of the, uh, anybody here read Dune besides me? I did Just not. Me. There's a drug there that they used basically to control the population. Yeah. To, I don't uh, like science them. fiction. Salt Peter. Really? Yeah. I like. Uh, I, uh, I am somewhat of a live and let live kind of guy, especially when it comes to legalizing marijuana. Well, it's, a, it's a libertarian issue. But I do think, and John and I were actually talking about this before the show, not to get personal, but this country has a massive drug problem. Uh, it's starting with alcohol. Well, yeah, exa- exactly. Did one of those emailers say that in uh, Colorado now they've legalized doing shrooms? Yes. Yeah, there's a... Oh, uh, that's dangerous. Yeah. That's I, dangerous. Well, there are people, I've read interviews recently with tons of professionals, they're not, you know, goofballs, who microdose daily. Just because they say it helps them concentrate, really? Not 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 major doses, but microdose huh. psychedelics. Uh, have you noticed though in the last say, I don't know, two three years, you can smell weed everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. 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 We talked before, about that you yesterday. You never could. Right. Oh, did you? Okay, yeah. you could stop before. at an intersection in people, the summer. People don't. Yeah. yeah, they don't make an attempt to hide it at no. all. No, or you, you walk into a store and you walk by somebody, you go. Hey, he was smoking weed on the right. way in. In, in. in our younger days, Such and I, we didn't micro dose, we uh, major dosed. Well, speak for yourself. I, I, oh, speak you were for right yourself. there. I remember you mixing them in with the Doritos no, and then no, holding no. you laying face down uh, at a park while Big Head Todd was playing, holding no. on to the earth because you thought you were going to spin off. Yeah. I remember that well, clearly. That time. Yeah. Star Tribune reporting, Nice Ride Minnesota is losing its main sponsor next year. Without a replacement, the popular bike and scooter sharing program might have to shut down. Oh, no. Without sponsorship money from Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Minnesota, the Nice Ride system will face a $2 million shortfall in 2023, would need to find a new sponsor or secure public funding to open for the season, according to Ashwat Narayanan, executive director of the Transportation Advocacy Organization, our Streets, Minnesota. Narayanan sent a letter signed by officials from several transportation and environmental advocacy groups to Minneapolis City Council members this month, asking them to include $2 million bucks in the city's 2023 budget to fill the gap until they can find a new sponsor. The city's latest transportation action plan aims to reduce car trips and increase biking, walking, and non-motorized transportation. Joe. What? I was today years old when I learned that the city of Minneapolis, which I thought was kind of cool until I discovered why, the city of Minneapolis has what they call a a map of streets that have been plowed or are, you know, hey, a couple of inches have fallen, but we've got that street taken care of. Oh, really? Do you want to know why? I don't know. For the bicycle riders. For the bicycle riders. (laughs) What do you mean you were this day's old? I I just found that out this morning. That's, that's 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 a thing. That's a thing now. Uh, they also do the park, the trails, the bike trails. Oh, they do? First and better than the streets are done. But it's a different division. It's the park department that does it. Oh, here I thought it but was. Yeah. There's often times where the street is impassable, but the, the bike path right You can to ride it. your huffy to work. Perfect. So what I would do is I would just pull the old crap can up on the bike trail and ride that. <laughs> Republican officials in a rural Arizona county refused yesterday to certify the 2022 election despite no evidence of anything wrong with the count, a decision that was quickly challenged in court by the state's top election official. The refusal to certify by Cochise County in southeastern Arizona comes amid pressure from prominent Republicans to reject results showing Democrat winning top races. State Elections Director Cory Lorick wrote in a letter last week that the Secretary of State, Katie Hobbs, who was elected governor in the race, is required by law to approve the statewide canvas by next week and will have to exclude Cochise County's votes if they aren't received in time. 
Well, in a case of be careful what you ask for, that could have an adverse effect on Republicans because if that county vote is excluded, it would threaten to flip the victor in at least two close races, a U.S. House seat and state schools chief from a Republican to a Democrat. Arizona law requires county officials to approve the election canvas, and lawyers in several counties warn Republican supervisors they might face criminal charges for failing to carry out their obligations. So it's, you came in at about you know, 11 or so, so there was plenty of snow on the ground. Did you see any bicycle riders? No, I did not. Have you noticed that the skill level of the bike rider in the winter far is far greater than those that ride in the summer? Well, doesn't that stand to reason? I've always kind of respected these badasses yeah. that ride their their bikes in the winter. N- number one, they stay the hell out of the way of the cars. They don't try that BS. They're right. the real pros. Yeah, and you got to plan for going down a couple times a day if you're riding the bicycle, sure. right? I do love the precious ones that have to get up for their run when there's you know six inches of snow get outside. Get the eco fun and get spike tires on an electric bike. There you go. It's hard to run in sorrels, those big heavy <laughs> monsters. <laughs> Did she rook shoes today? He yeah. looked no. orthopedic. What was he wearing? I think he picked those up at the Twitch farm. Yeah, they look like... Uh, How did you notice his shoes? It's the oh, first you know, thing I'm he an noticed. observant person. Okay. And I thought those shoes are screaming that you were you were brought over here on some sort of <laughs> helpful bus. Oh, God. He did. He asked. The first thing he asked about was the bus ride. <laughs> yeah. uh, we made a, a, a whole oh bunch of God. ableist slurs. We really did. Directed at his... But, uh, man, he had... To, they had to, oh. See, they gave themselves away because they had that big bulbous toe, yeah. you know, yeah. and they looked like... To uh, fit his club foot. Like, exactly. <laughs> and he needed some sort of help. He doesn't have any but toes. But then he compounds <laughs> it by saying, they cost $19. Oh, well, that's a tip God. off right there. Oh. It's like walking on air. He got help from the government to buy those shoes. I like oh. to buy my shoes at Goodwill, nice and used. Yeah. They're broke in. Johnny, oh. Joe, thank you. Joe, you actually oh, asked okay. him that, didn't you? Yeah, I said, where did you get these? And, and he said... he mentioned the place and i found it hard to believe you could get shoes for 20 bucks but he did and they look like he needs help but he says they're comfortable though he yeah. spends all day on his feet are you uh, comfortable as opposed to uh, make a nice living. living when he worked here when he spent all day on his knees right know? that's yeah. right uh, <laughs> S- Anywho, sea foam helps. Kenny, <laughs> it's your turn now. Why did I do that to me? I don't know. <laughs> that was what really dumb. Oh, anyway, uh, yeah, sea foam helps lubricate and keep the moving parts <laughs> of your. You were. Uh, <laughs> they probably got raccoon no, blood on them. Uh, they look like something meant for the wild. These or are something b- boots. Forest. Where were we? Seafoam, lubricating and keeping the moving parts of your internal combustion engine moving properly. It stabilizes fuel, controls small amounts of moisture, and that's good. And what's really good, and if you think about it, it preserves ignition vapors. That means when you turn that key, that thing snaps to life. That's what you want. Seafoam, the pitch could be don't work harder, work smarter. But if you don't use seafoam until the situation is dire, well... That's okay, too, because seafoam used in a panic when the engine is stumbling or not starting, that can really bail your lazy butt out of a bind. Trust me, it's it's helped me out a few times. Very easy to find seafoam. It's everywhere. Convenience stores, knack hardware, auto parts, you name it, they're there. It's our own local company with a global reach and a miracle in a world of bad gas, seafoam. Rolling. Pitter patter, let's get at her. Latte Schmate. Here's Joe Suchere. Here's Reavers for 30 Bales Restaurant in downtown Hopkins. I was just pulling up their drinks menu. I call it their craft cocktails that they make at 30 Bales Restaurant. First of all, I got a great email from Jerry. He and his wife uh, went, was it last weekend or the weekend before, for the brunch. And he says, Reavers, 30 Bales might very well have the best Bloody Mary I have ever had. And I have to agree with him. I've had the Bloody Mary at 30 Bales, and it is fantastic. A scratch kitchen that takes their cocktails serious, too. If they you're... put a hunk of sausage in it? No, but they got the, well, yeah, they got the little, uh, what do little you call it? Wiener? Yeah, with some cheese, yeah. a little olive on there. Oh, boy. Old-fashioned. 
It's if a meal. If you're a fan of the old fashioned, they make a mean old fashioned at Thirty Bills Restaurant. But check out their entire online menu too. If you want to do some takeout, you can do all of your ordering online. Uh, that brunch, by the way, available 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Saturday and Sunday. Their happy hour is Tuesday through Friday, 3 to 5:30 p.m. And lunch Tuesday through Friday from 11 to 3 p.m. Their scratch kitchen is fantastic, and it doesn't matter if you've got the steak eater in your life, the burger, it does the the healthy nut like my wife is. They'll take care of everybody in your family. So stop in, say hi to Todd and the entire crew at Thirty Bales Restaurant, and please let them know that you heard about them here on the Garage Logic what, Podcast. What time do they open? They're, they're open for lunch right now. Oh. Mm. Oh, Soul Man's mm. got a trip on his mind. Mm. I mentioned yesterday that the traveling Lymans are back in Eden Prairie. <clears throat> you did. And if you want to read about travel hell, oh. read what Jessica wrote on WorldWideWaftage.com. No. It, uh, it makes for some interesting reading, how they thought they were going to the Seychelles, and all kinds of bleep hit the fan. Really? It, is, it makes you glad that you might be at home watching the snow fall gently in the yard because it just was hell to pay. Uh, and only because they come to us all the way from <coughs> Eden Prairie, from the traveling Lyman. It just doesn't sound right. All the, the way same, from Eden no. Prairie. I don't think I ever would have started. <laughs> hell, I made a farther drive than that today. <laughs> I don't think I ever would have started the bit if, it, if they originally started coming from Eden Prairie. Uh, you know, it only worked because they were in Marlin we Park. Blo- we would have blocked them. In right. Mopumalanga, yeah. South Africa. On this day in 1816. Joe, today is November 29th. Henry M. Rice was born in Wattsfield, Vermont. At 23, he would become a sutler, S-U-T-L-E-R, at Fort Snelling, running a concessionary store that sold sundry items to soldiers. Rice would also enter the political arena, encouraging Congress to define the state's boundaries and serving as one of Minnesota's first two senators. He died in 1894. And on this day in 1884, Anna Ramsey died. She was admired as Governor Alexander Alexander Ramsey's help meet. I think that means wife. What's a help meet, John? Uh, well, I'll explain it to you off the air. She had efforts to create. She led efforts to create homeless shelters and support other charities. I think help meet is it, a, was uh, a term for wife. It's the same as it means the same as help mate. Yeah, help mate. It's uh, just a, a different version. Sure, of Sure, well, work mate. wife is what that means. On this day in the year two thousand, in the year two thousand, pioneering, <laughs> pioneering journalist Marvel Jackson Cook died in New York. Born in Mankato in 1903, Cook moved to Harlem in 1926 and worked for the NAACP's Crisis Magazine, the Amsterdam News, and the People's Voice. In 1950. She joined the staff of the New York Daily Compass and was the first African-American woman to work full-time for a major white-owned American newspaper. And she was born Marvel Jackson Cook in Mankato. Huh. In 1903, died in 2007. She had a long life. So there you are. Congratulations to, uh, to this day in history. In Minnesota, these soccer players, when they fall down, suits they stay down for quite a while. They it's the re- oh, they really ah, put on a show. Oh, who was the twin that we had that did that? Uh, Carlos Gomez. Carlos Gomez. Oh, he could give us a show. He'd oh, yeah. wait till a helicopter oh, yeah. right before he'd get up. <laughs> a little bit of Hollywood yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm so hurt. Well, I, in fact, I'd get the text from Joe watching the Twins. Well, looks like Gomez got shot in the back again. Uh, we <laughs> lost a Timberwolf last night, too. Somebody got hurt. Yeah, oh, Carl Anthony Towns. Hurt his Three leg. Weeks. Big deal. Three weeks, he's out. Three Just weeks? Read yeah. Just read it, yep. Well, they initially feared it might be a ruptured Achilles tendon. That wouldn't be good, would no. it, Chris? Especially for a big man. Yeah. Ouch. What's his name? Hurt. Towns Van Z- What is it? Catherine Carl Towns. Van Not Carl Catherine. Anthony Towns. Carl a- Anthony Towns. So what do you call him? Do you call him Cat. 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 Carl? Cat. 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 So Cat's going to be sitting around a while. He's got some time to ease oh. on up to Maple Grove Lock and Safe and... Save a and little he money. Need, those guys need a safe. Uh, for Just for the cash, from yeah, what I that's understand. That's what I'm talking about. It's a, uh, well, I call it a progressive sale in progress, but I don't think it's technically a sale. It's it's a, a rebate thing. 
you spend nine hundred ninety nine dollars up to twelve ninety nine. You get you get two rebates. You get a fifty dollar in store instant rebate, and then a fifty dollar mail in rebate. And this goes on and on and on, all the way up to eight thousand five hundred or more. You get three hundred and fifty right there instantly in store. And then you get three fifty in the mail. That's seven hundred dollars, no matter how you add it up. Seven hundred dollars. Merry Christmas to you and yours from uh, Maple Grove Lock and Safe dot com. Of course, we're talking the Liberty Safe lineup here. The best safes ever made, made right in the U.S. Transferable lifetime warranty. The whole deal. Best built safes on the planet. Get to that website, Maple Grove Lock and Safe dot com. Check them out for yourself. Then ease up to the showroom or down whatever the case may be 6901 east fish lake road monday through friday eight to five and 24 hours a day at maple grove lock and safe dot com does the clock ever stop in soccer i'm seeing if he was paying attention i think only and i'm willing to be corrected i'm no soccer expert but i believe only due to injury or due to uh Expulsion? What's the word uh, when you kick somebody out of the game? Uh, you've been 86. There you've you been go. Uh, ejected. <laughs> okay. Are we, uh, that can well, do it. Did we? Is it? Does it go an hour or two hours? Ninety minutes? 60, 60 minute halves. Two halves. Two halves. Not three halves. That'd be periods. That'd be yeah. That'd be. Did I ever tell you that story, Kenny, about my brother who uh, doesn't really know much about sports? We uh, went to the wild game, and uh, after the end of the third period. He, uh, we stood up, and he goes, all right, uh, next round of beers is on me. I said, Rob, game's over. Game's over. <laughs> he was ready to settle in for the old fourth period of hockey. Did I ever tell you funny. about that time I got out of the minivan at uh, Devil's Tower and I fell down? Hmm. How about a town ball story? Yeah, get, lay, lay it on me. Well, this wow. one time we were, Joe, you were not paying attention Joe, to anything. We're we trying to find Joe, out how done? meaningless this game is this, if Iran doesn't have to win. It's not any fun if you don't get mad. Right. It, it's kind of like when our wives aren't paying attention to us. We can get this at home. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, GLers, it's your last chance to sign up we for the lost garage. Him. He's gone. He's completely gone. He's mesmerized by this. No, I'm hot trying to figure out World if Cup Iran action. has to win. Uh, I mean, they don't have to win. Reavers, it ain't no fun when wow. the fish ain't biting. It really isn't. But if Iran loses... Iran so far away. <laughs> oh, this is just silly, this world. Last <laughs> chance to sign up for the Garage Logic Town Council and be eligible uh, to join us, by the way, for our first ever event at Tattersall from 4 to 6.30. Appetizer start at 4 and a GL podcast to follow at 5. Sign up and RSVP today. At garagelogic.com. Yes, John. I, I got it. Whichever team wins will reach the round of 16 at Cutter 2022. And for the U.S., even a draw would see it eliminated from the tournament. Tournament. Tournament? Tournament. So it's a winner take all, according to this. Sorry, GLers. To move on to the next round.